You'll be aware now that over the weekend, there was an escalation of tensions in the Middle East that Iran attacked Israel with a number of drone strikes. What I've absorbed so far is this. Once Israel attacked the Iranian consulate in Damascus, it was inevitable that there would be retaliatory measures. It also seems to me to be clear there's been a long-term plan to involve Iran in an escalating conflict. One person who seems particularly excited at the prospect is, of course, Lindsey Graham, and we'll get to him in a minute. But remember when Trump was said to have left office with those boxes that contained confidential presidential data, much of it, and perhaps the most controversial aspect of it, pertained to potential escalating conflict with Iran. Of course, Iran attacking Israel is wrong. As you probably know, when it comes to military matters, I admire deeply service personnel, the tens of thousands of American service personnel situated all over the Middle East right now, who are now, because of this escalating conflict, incredibly vulnerable, have uh, our support and our gratitude and our prayers. But it seems clear that creating tension and even all-out war with Iran has been on the agenda for a little while. I mean, when did you first hear about it? Isn't it your man, Donald Trump, who claimed that the reason he took those boxes is because they contained information that demonstrated there was a long-term plan to engage Iran in military conflict and he wanted to have that in case he got tarnished with accusations. Let's get into the details as best we can of this story. And just note this, that while the project of the nation state continues, whilst nations like France, I think, are calling for de-escalation and possibly the Netherlands, our country, the one I'm from, the United Kingdom, we obedient little snapper dogs that we are, yapping away at the heels of whoever the United States establishment condemned, participated in the response, the Israeli response to these attacks. And of course, the United States have now engaged directly in conflict in support of Israel. So now, essentially, the United States are in a global war on at least two fronts. Of course, the Ukraine-Russia conflict remains a proxy war funded by you, US taxpayers and us, UK taxpayers. And now, as well as supplying Israel with arms, it seems that there is direct military involvement and that it could yet escalate. The thing that I find really extraordinary and difficult about this is that these events take place in like Jerusalem and Damascus, words that are redolent with spiritual awakening. It's astonishing for me that this is the scene where all of this trauma takes place. But those of you, and God knows there are enough of you that know scripture better than me, knew that this would always be the place where the apocalypse, the revelation, Armageddon, the final reckoning, went down. And those of you that have studied the origins of the First World War will be aware that extraordinary events that somehow seem disassociated and occasionally insignificant can escalate to the point where millions and millions and millions of lives are lost. And are you being asked whether or not you want to get involved in an escalating conflict, let alone through your taxpayer dollars, potentially through your life or the life of your loved ones. Let's have a look at this story now. Biden condemns Iran's strike on Israel, a case study in imperialist hypocrisy. This is from a uh, socialist website, guys. But you'll notice, even if you're of the right, even if you out and out condemn socialism, just notice how many things you agree with. And every time you do agree with some of this, you can give yourself a real pat on the back. Because if you're not opposed, remember, like, like I said in the Pfizer story, if you're not opposed to people on the other side of the divide, when it comes to culture or sort of lazy political labels, then you are part of a movement that could save the world because you are potentially part of a decentralized model where people run their own communities according to their own values, according to their individual sovereignty and their participation in representative democratic processes at the localist possible level. Let's get into it. The imperialist powers have responded to Iran's strikes on Israel on Saturday with an outpouring of condemnation. I condemn these attacks in the strongest possible terms, says Biden. America's ironclad commitment to the security of Israel has been reaffirmed. That means that we back Israel. The G7 group of imperialist powers said in a statement, we unequivocally condemn in the strongest terms Iran's direct unprecedented attack on Israel. There's a brilliant bit of footage we'll show you in a minute of David 
Cameron, uh, current British Foreign Secretary and former British Prime Minister, WEF member, globalist stooge, straight up and down globalist, all over the gaff, stocks and shares, all of that all day long, saying, well, this is unprecedented. And the newscaster on mainstream news, to her total credit, goes, what would Britain do? If a consulate got bombed by Iran, well, we'd uh, almost like he didn't spot the question. Well, we'd attack them. We'd attack them hard. Well, isn't that what Iran are doing? Yeah, but this is yeah, but what they're doing. They're being a ra- Have you seen what they wear and how they talk? I saw one in a curly slipper. They wear different clothes than us. Iran has further stepped towards the destabilization of the region and risk provoking an uncontrollable regional escalation. Like, there's a really amazing post um, from Iran that we saw a saga post on breaking points where Iran go, look, you bombed our consulate. We've droned you with some half arse lazy drones that took ages to get there that are a bit like not proper. Now, let's draw a line under this. And wouldn't it be sort of amazing if Israel, backed by the United States and the UK and these G7 nations went, all right. Well, you know, even in the Old Testament, an eye for an eye, let's look for a diplomatic solution that doesn't lead us all into the jaws of death. But one senses further retaliation might be on the way. These statements by the imperialist warmongers repeated by every major NATO power are the height of hypocrisy. Let's get the timeline accurate. Iran's strike was a response to the April 1st attack by Israel on an Iranian embassy in Syria that killed seven top-level Iranian military officers, including two generals. So that's kind of a military strike in the first instance, isn't it, wouldn't you say? In response to Israel's flagrantly illegal and murderous attack on what was effectively Iranian soil, the imperialist powers effectively endorsed it. Now the imperialists are falling over themselves to condemn Iran's response to Israel's action. This is all the more striking given that Iran's action was largely symbolic. The Iranian government announced Saturday's strike to countries in the region 72 hours in advance in an effort to limit the impact. As Reuters reported Sunday, Iran gave wide notice days before Saturday's drone and missile attack on Israel, allowing mass casualties and rampant escalation to be averted. Isn't it extraordinary that there are revenge attacks and retaliation, but also concurrent diplomacy? And even as tensions escalate escalate between, for example, the United States and China as part of a presuming escalating Cold War. What continues is trade. What continues is business. What continues is the necessary relationship with China for the manufacture of endless commodities in your country and mine. What reality do we believe in? The geopolitical military reality or the economic reality? Because they don't make sense. They seldom coalesce, at least not in patterns that I'm able to observe. We can't continue to bring you this awakening and hopefully enjoyable content without the support of our partners. That's why I've got to ask you, and I'm glad to ask you, are you struggling with back taxes or unfiled returns? The IRS is escalating collections, adding, get this, 20,000 new agents and sending over 5 million collection letters to kick off 2024 to spend on things that you probably don't agree with, like wars and measures and a total lack of infrastructure. In these challenging times, your best defense is... Tax Network USA. Don't let the IRS take advantage of you. With over 14 years of experience, Tax Network USA have saved their clients over $1 billion in back taxes. No matter the size of your tax issue, their expertise is your advantage. They specialize in negotiating with the IRS, aiming to significantly reduce your debt. Tax Network USA doesn't just negotiate, they also protect your assets from IRS seizures and manage your yearly returns for ongoing compliance. Importantly, they are licensed to help you with all state tax issues regardless of where you live in the United States. The clock is ticking. Don't wait as the IRS steps up its game. Seize control of your financial future now. Contact Tax Network USA for immediate relief and expert guidance. Call 1-800-245-6000 or visit taxnetworkusa.com forward slash brand. Don't let tax issues overpower you. Turn to Tax Network USA and find your path to financial peace of mind. Right, let's get back to this content. The imperialist powers are asserting that they and their proxies can kill as many people as they want, carry out targeted assassinations and act in complete violation of anything resembling international law. But any response, even of the most minimal character, is denounced as a crime. This is the basic law of colonialism and imperialism. Now, what I like about this kind of language is it shows you that ultimately there are centralised power And then there's the rest of us. There are extremists and lunatics throughout the world. 
across all cultures. And do you not feel that there is the potential for those of us that believe in harmony, that those of us that acknowledge our individual flaws and our collective flaws as a species, but believe in the possibility of change might possibly subvert the models of those that continue to colonialize and condemn and generate conflict. Remember, Julian Assange, still in Belmarsh, still without trial, says the function of government is to transfer public money into private hands. Remember, it was also Assange that told us that the Afghanistan war was not about resolution. It was about perpetuation. Are you not beginning to think that the same might be true of the Ukraine-Russia conflict? If the Russian military is getting ever more powerful, the longer it continues, if Ukrainian people are being devastated, if it's making incredible profits for the military industrial complex, if it's making people afraid and fearful that we live on the precipice of apocalypse, what reason is there to bring about a peaceful resolution? When our aims and intentions are at odds with those that lead us, there is only one sensible solution, and that is revolution. Peaceful revolution always. We've learned that from the great leaders of the past, but revolution nonetheless. While Biden condemns the actions of Iran, he does not extend the same language to Israel's onslaught against Gaza, which is being funded, armed, and politically supported by the United States and other imperialist powers. Israel is actively carrying out a genocide against the population of Gaza, already having killed at least 40,000 people. It's systematically displacing, starving and bombing an entire population of 2.2 million people and methodically and deliberately murdering doctors and aid workers. The genocide in Gaza is developing into a regional war which can very quickly draw in the entire globe. It's pretty easy to see how this could escalate, isn't it? Sections of the US political establishment are openly advocating a full-scale war, asserting that the Biden administration is not going far enough in supporting an Israeli war against Iran. The Wall Street Journal wrote in an editorial, the attack should at least cause Mr. Biden and his fellow Democrats to end their cold war with Israel over Gaza and recognize that this really is a war against Iran. It continued, leaders in both parties should also start telling the truth to Americans about the new world of global threats. Russia, China, Iran, North Korea are all on the march working together. Now, I'd like a little bit more evidence before we embark on a war that involves Russia, massive nuclear superpower, China, massive nuclear superpower, Iran, massive nuclear resource rich, uh, not superpower, but significant nation, North Korea, nuclear power with, let's face it, a somewhat up for it leader. I mean, also, that's quite a lot of countries, isn't it, to say, it's war. The Israeli cabinet has been deliberating over the past day on what actions to take, and there are evidently divisions within the regime itself. In any event, the Biden administration has reaffirmed that if Israel does take action, it will have full support. So instead of saying, no, listen, let's chill this right out, they're saying, we'll support you whatever you want to do. Even if you take the most sort of open-hearted approach to this, people that are aggrieved and in a, a vengeful state need support and love and guidance. And the same is true of nations. Like, listen, this is terrible that there's been these drone strikes, but you did bomb that consulate. Look, should we take the higher ground here, draw a bit of a line under this? That would be the kind of counsel that I, I might be offering. But apparently that's a position that France have taken as well. So, you know, that's something. Appearing on Meet the Press, White House spokesman John Kirby declared, whether and how the Israelis respond is going to be up to them. Oh, good. Asked if Israel does decide to move forward with retaliatory strikes, will the US support Israel? And Kirby said, drum roll please, the US support for Israel's self-defense will stay ironclad. Ironclad. Medieval, interesting image there. The United States responded to the events on October 7 by launching a major military offensive throughout the Middle East. Yeah, remember that. When after those uh, abominable terrorist attacks by Hamas on, on Israel, the United States did get into some crazy stuff. And as it says here, within days, the US surged an armada of warships, which is a weird move, and hundreds of aircraft to the region, which is used to launch dozens of illegal airstrikes over the past six months. Now, many people believe that that's an indication that there was always an intention to escalate conflict in that region prior to October the 7th. And that October the 7th was just a useful legitimization of that agenda. Remember, it appears that the US military machine, let's call it the military industrial complex as we generally do, have had sites set on Iran for a significant amount of time. That's at least how it seems, doesn't it? The US offensive in the Middle East is a crucial element of an unfolding global war with Russia and China as the main targets. The subjugation of Iran lying at the heart of Eurasia is a critical component of the United States drive for global military domination. And does it benefit you? 
Americans, American taxpayers, you're funding it. Your loved ones are out there in the numbering tens of thousands on those warships in those territories, Jordan, Syria, etc., and are now especially vulnerable. And in fact, let's go beyond that, because who among you would be surprised if there were terrorist attacks in the United Kingdom right now, or if there were retaliatory strikes in US cities right now, or further legitimization of the New York subway being patrolled by the military because there are terrorist threats now, or who uh, that's been through that pandemic would preclude the possibility that now what we're going to be told is there are going to be terrorist attacks on our... You know, but, but it's likely, isn't it? Because the truth is the United States is an unprecedented and still uh, unparalleled global military superpower. And that's the kind of power that you want only advocating for peace and diplomacy. When they participate in regional disputes and fail to condemn the actions of their allies, they necessarily escalate tensions. So wait for it. Attacks in New York, attacks in Texas, attacks in the UK. What do you think? Let me know in the chat. Do you think that's likely? Whatever the immediate developments in coming days, the regional war throughout the Middle East as part of an expanding global war is spiraling dangerously out of control. Yeah, the world stands much closer to nuclear conflict than any time since World War II. After the consulate was bombed in Damascus, the permanent mission of uh, IR Iran to the UN and New York offered up this post, which you can see, like at the time that we pulled it, had nearly 15 million views. And this is interesting because I would say because of the fusion of diplomatic, military, and emotional language. Conducted on the strength of Article 51 of the UN Charter pertaining to legitimate defense, Iran's military action was in response to the Zionist regime's aggression against our diplomatic premises in Damascus. Okay, so that was the attack that we've talked about already. The matter can be deemed concluded. They're saying after these drone attacks, which are terrible, but I believe that as yet no one has died as a result of those attacks. Now, you know, I don't think I would like to be subject to a drone attack. That's certainly not my position, but it's certainly a good thing that no one has died. Isn't it interesting? The matter can be deemed concluded. That's an attempt at reason, isn't it? Even though it is an unreasonable act to bomb potentially civilian targets. However, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, a bit threatening, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime. Of course, that's, you know, like, I guess that adjective there is a condemnation of Israel. And when we get into the subject of Israel's right to exist as a state from which the US must stay away. So almost a provocation there, one might say, of the United States baked into that as well. But wouldn't it be miraculous, inconceivable almost, for the global military response to be, do you know what, we're going to, let's calm this right down. Wouldn't you, don't you, don't you crave in your heart somewhere a global statesperson, some Gandhi, summonsed from some far-flung grave that would on all our behalf say, we have to end this. This can't continue. We all see where this could go. On behalf of the God in all of us and the God around us all, let us end this. Let there be a cessation. Let there be reason. Let us recognize that so many of you have lost sons and daughters. So many of you are nursing broken hearts that we must from somewhere find forgiveness within ourselves, not further limitless vendettas. That is surely what we need as we stand on the brink, not only of global Armageddon, of domestic attacks in all of our nations while the onslaught in Gaza continues. And it's one of those things that I'll be honest with you, I can't spend too much time thinking about it. I've got children and like, you know, whenever you hear children die in wreckage, all of the, it's just like, if you've got like, I have a seven year old, a five year old, an eight month old child that's survived heart surgery, those kind of images are unbearable. What you want is the voice from within us all, perhaps if Gandhi ain't coming back, if Christ ain't coming back, even if Damascus and Jerusalem are at the very center of all this, you need someone that is going to bring love into the conversation. But what we're getting is David Cameron. All these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there okay. in black and white. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, you know, we would take the very strong action. And Iran would say that that's what they did? Well, what they did, as I said, was a so massive they, attack. So no, they were right think, to respond, but they overreacted, is well, that what you're I, saying? I'm, what I'm saying they is that the, right atta the, attack, the attack they carried out 
was on a very large scale, much bigger than but people you accepted. Right to respond. No, I, you know, look, I love a droning as much as the next person. I've not met a war yet that I don't like and can't profit from in some way or another. But you do not do that while wearing a turban. Countries have a right to respond when they feel they've suffered uh, an aggression. Of course they do. But look at the scale of that response. Had those weapons not so been shot like down, respond, but there, just could have been, there could have been thousands of casualties, including civilian casualties. I think that's a really important point to take into account. <laughs> civilian ca He's bringing up civilian casualties with what's going on in Gaza right now. Whoa, that's heavy. Our colleague and friend over here on Rumble, Glenn Greenwald, has been posting about this, as you might imagine. And if you know Glenn's work, you'll be aware of how uh, he has a great ability to summarise and convey these complex issues with uh, journalistic and legal integrity. Let's have a look at some of Greenwald's posts on this. Firstly, uh, the US stays in endless wars, financing and fighting multiple wars at the same time because those who wield the greatest power in DC, who fund both parties, profit greatly from it, as does the permanent US security state. The ones who don't benefit are ordinary Americans. That's you watching this right now, are funding this. No one is on your behalf saying, hey, hey, this has got to stop. Like, literally none of them. Are they? Are they? Does Donald Trump want to end it? Does even Bobby, who I pray for, Bobby Kennedy, will you end this? Will you lend your advocacy and your voice to peace? Will you? The view of the establishment, GOP, the grand old party, and much of the establishment Democrat party, say that this is this is the agenda. This is the global agenda, according to Glenn Greenwald. Tell me if you agree with this. Finance the war in Ukraine indefinitely. Well, that seems to be the case. Bomb Yemen. Is that happening? You know, I know it is, but is it continually happening? Finance Israel's war in Gaza. OK, confront China with at least a Cold War, if not more. That's what I referenced earlier. Bomb Iran. OK. So, endless war. Is that what you want? That's a couple of posts there from our man, Glenn Greenwald. I don't feel like Lindsey Graham's got the right attitude to global conflict. I think we should stop asking him. But if you do ask Lindsey Graham what we should do, this is what he'll tell you. I've been saying for six months now, hit Iran. They have oil fields out in the open. They have the um, Revolutionary Guard headquarters you can see from space. Blow it off the map. Yeah, blow it off the map. What's it doing on a map? It shouldn't even be on a map. Wherever you stand on the complex Middle East and issues, when you hear the place names of Jerusalem and Damascus, there is a significant clue there that this is a time where we need to awaken. It's extraordinary, isn't it, that some of the world's major faiths, Christianity, Judaism and uh, Islam, have their spiritual homes in this region, that they are born of this region, that those words are redolent with peace, enlightenment and rapture and second comings and the potential for change, for an inborn light to be turned on within each of us, a personal connection with the Messiah available to us all. What value does that have when we are led in the manner that we are, when you have no control or purchase, when you are nothing but a subject in your own nation, when you're just pulled along by the great gravity of warmongering states that see you and your children, your bodies and your minds as just collateral to be spent in the endless pursuit of centralized power. Wouldn't it be good if the Western nations, the United States, the G7 advocated on behalf of peace here, arrived in that region as bringers of peace and of, if not salvation, then certainly of reconciliation. Because that is the only alternative to escalating conflict. And whilst you might feel that what I'm saying sounds ridiculous and idealistic, that perhaps shows us how far we've come from who we're supposed to be, that the idea of peace and diplomacy and non-violent solution sounds ridiculous, while Lindsey Graham stroking himself into an ejaculatory frenzy over the possibility of more war is more likely to be the direction that great nations such as yours and mine and all of ours pursue. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.